Hola bueno, iglesia, qué placer estar aquí con ustedes hoy. Les quiero hacer una pregunta. ¿A cuántos de ustedes les gusta ver películas con subtítulos? ¿A cuántos? A mí, a mí me encanta, porque la razón, uh, cuando veo películas con subtítulos, entiendo el mensaje bien, me, me da a entender el mensaje. Now, unless you're fluent in Spanish, you're like, what just happened, right? And the reality is that I do love watching movies with subtitles. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, every time we watch a movie with the headphones, they're like, why, why are those things down there? It's like, subtitles, we need them. Those are good. Because they clarify the message. They're good. Now, some people may not like them, but that's, that's your prerogative, and that's fine. Now, I see, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this specific subject today is because I see there's so many relationships who are hurting because of bad communication. And I don't expect this teaching to solve every problem, every relationship that you, that you have in your life, but I do hope that it encourages you to try one more time. Again, I think all of us, if we're honest, we need help with communication. I'm, I, I know I do. I need a lot of help with communication, not only because English is not my first language, but you guys know that, you know, the way that you say things matter. Uh, your attitude matters. You know, the things that you don't say matter. All of that is communication. In fact, earlier in the service, uh, Mike Miller came to me and he's like, hey, uh, I know you're speaking today. Barbara, my wife, she's asking if you can uh, speak slower. Like she's going to put on the slow, the slow speaking ears or the fast speaking ears. So I'm trying to slow down. But that won't happen because I just speak fast. But so I hope uh, that you can write, take notes if you do. Here's my main point today. Because God initiated communication with humankind, we have an example to follow. So the question that I have for you is, will you initiate communication with fill in the blank? And I really hope you do. I really hope you put a name in there. Like, I actually want you to fill in the blank. Because again, I think all of us may have a relationship that needs fixing, that needs, needs initiation. Now, some of you may say very quickly, like, yes, I've tried. Like, I've tried to communicate with fill in the blank. But again, should you try again? And this is why my point I'm trying to make today, should you try again? So fill in the blank. Who are you not communicating with? Is it so your spouse, perhaps? Is it your children? Maybe your, your young teenagers or maybe your adult children's, uh, children? Is it your parents, your adult parents or teens? If you're here a teenager, are you communicating with your parents? Maybe your neighbor even? Are you the kind that just says hi and run as fast as you can into the house? Or are you communicating with them? How about your coworkers? your employees, your, your boss even? Who are you not communicating with? Who do you need subtitles? Who do you need to, some help to initiate communication? You see, one of the things that pastor said last week, which I loved last message, last week's message, because it was very fitting for me, is we need to connect to God's power for everyday life. Now, God has already done great miracles, and, and like Pastor said last week, he doesn't have to prove himself again. He has many times, and he is powerful. But the reality for us is that we need his power for everything, you know, to get out of bed or just to have communication with our family, with those who maybe have hurt us. Now, as I was preparing for this message, I was trying to be really cautious and careful because I, I don't want this message to come out as a self-help uh, sermon, like, hey, do better, you talk, talk more, and you'll be okay. That's, that's definitely not my point or <laughs> the goal that I have. So the question that I want you to ask yourself is this, are you relying on the power of the Holy Spirit in your communications in every relationship? And this is only for you to answer. Are you relying on His power, not on your ability to communicate, but on God's power to be able to communicate effectively with, again, Fill in the blank. So I have three points that I will help, help you uh, communicate better, if you will. Uh, so here's principle number one. Principle number one, God is a communicator. And a very good one, by the way. Now, we have great examples since the beginning of creation. Uh, and I said this earlier, but if you don't agree with this, you can talk to pastor, because I literally copy and paste this from something he told me. So here he goes, like literally. So here's how God has communicated with us. Here's point number one, creation. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. He stalked through us, communicated with us through creation, the beauty of what He has made. 
How about the next one? The law and the prophets, the revelation of his word. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God has spoke to our fathers by the prophets, by the law and the prophets, the Bible. So God has communicated through his word. Or how about the next one? The incarnation of Jesus, the person of Jesus. Probably the clearest way he has communicated. Hebrews 1, 2 says, But in the last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. The illumination of scriptures. Not only he speaks through the word, but when he thinks, he brings things back to, to life when you're reading a passage. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God, and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And then the last one, the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us, he communicates with us with the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. And I love this passage because Jesus is saying, hey, the Holy Spirit will speak directly from God. God will communicate to you through the Holy Spirit. He will bring things to your life, things, remember things that you need to surrender to him. Communication is key, right? In any relationship, you have to talk, you have to communicate, you have to be able to share in order to grow. And I love how Christ, God, has communicated with us so well, so well. So, if God is such a good communicator, why aren't we? Why do we struggle so much with relationships? Talking, communicating, sharing what we're going through, maybe the, the hurts that have happened. Now, this is probably a very Sunday school answer, but the, the reason is sin, right? Sin disrupts the process of communication. You can probably tell it, right? When, when somebody has said something to hurt you, do you usually like, hey, I want to go talk. It's usually, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I might not want to talk. I might want to retreat. Especially if you're an introvert, you're like, yeah, I'm never going to talk about this. I'm going to hide it behind. If you're an extrovert, you're like, let's fight. But <laughs> different people, right? But the reality is that sin disrupts our communication, and we see this principle in the garden. Genesis 3, verses 8 through 10, and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden, and I love that picture of God walking alongside his creation. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, but God, uh, of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. So why the communication was disrupted between God and men? Because of sin. There's things that will come in between our communication. And so I have two things that, that I want to share with you that would, uh, will hinder our communication. Because it doesn't matter how much we try to communicate. You can go back to that one. It doesn't matter how much we try to communicate. We need to remove the obstacles of communication. Otherwise, we won't ever get the message across. So what hinders our communication? Now, if you're a professional counselor, you're like, there's probably more than two, but, you know, I'm the one talking, so we're going to just share two. (laughs) So number one is pride, the need to be right. Are you in need to be right? To say, hey, no, I, I have the winning arguments. I have the most logic. My, my, my situation takes precedence because of pride. Is it pride that is hurting your communication? I know for me that's a big one. One of the things to say, no, I'm wrong. It's a big one. How about the next one? Selfishness, the need to be heard. Maybe it's not private. It's like, no, no, you got to listen to what I'm going through. You got to listen to my emotions. You got to listen to my point of view. Listen to what I'm saying. Is that what's hindering your communication? Perhaps you're not listening because you have the need to be heard. Listen to what I have to say. So what hinders your communication? Now, communication is tricky, right? Like, it, it's, it's a lot. Like I said, I don't expect the sermon to be like the end all, be all of communication, but, uh, you know, the, the beauty of communication, just to share an example with you, on Thursday, uh, I order H-E-B curbside, you know, because that's a blessing from God. I just go and they put the groceries in my car. I go back home, right? And so I selected uh, 8.30 to 9 o'clock, the last uh, session for H-E-B so that I can, you know, the, I can put the babies down and then there's peace and quiet in my home and, you know, I can just get in the right mindset to go get the groceries. 
And so as I'm, it's 8.15, I would look at my watch, and I was working on some homework. I have about 15 minutes before my window, right? Then I have 30 minutes to go get my groceries. We live about five minutes from the HEV uh, where, where we place the order. And so at 8.15, I get a text from my wife. And the text says, H-E-B. I was like, cool. I keep working on my homework, on my thing, right? 8.31, my wife walks by. She comes and says, hey, uh, are you going to go get H-E-V? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, but I texted you. He's like, I know. I saw it. He's like, but do you want me to go get it? It's like, no, I was going to get it. Like, but you, I mean, what, what happened? He's like, what, what do you mean what happened? Like, I ordered the HEV. I was going to go get it. He's like, yeah, but I texted you. I was asking if you wanted me to help you or if you're going to go get it or if I can help you somehow. He's like, babe, you text me three letters. Do you really expect me to understand that from three letters you want me to, you're asking me if I'm going to go. You're asking me if you want to go. Like, how is this, how is this, for reals? It's like, yeah. So, well, you usually text me back a question mark. So, but you didn't, it was just three letters. It was just three letters. <laughs> communication is complicated, right? But we all need help with our communication. So, principle number three, what do we do? Somebody needs to initiate conversation. Somebody has to start. Because what happens if you have two parties and none of the parties talk to each other? They won't talk to each other. And the reality of this is reconciliation. Somebody start, needs to start reconciliation. I went and looked at the, uh, the definition at the Baker Encyclopedia of the Bible. And, and I love what it says. It says, reconciliation is the restoration of friendly relationships and of peace where before there had been hostility and alienation. 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 That word. Ordinarily, it does include the removal of the off- offense which caused the disruption of peace and harmony. This was essentially so, and I love this part, this was especially so in the relationship of God with humanity when Christ removed the enmity existing between God and mankind by his vicarious sacrifice. As I was preparing for this, uh, I listened to Andy and Stanley, and he said something that was very interesting to me. He said, forgiveness takes one, reconciliation takes two. What does that mean? You can choose to forgive someone, right? Like, that's your decision. You don't have to wait for somebody's permission or timing to ask or forgive. Now, is forgiven easy? That's a separate conversation. But forgiveness only takes one. But reconciliation is a different animal, right? Because now you probably require some face-to-face encounters. You probably require some texts, some phone calls, some long talks. Why? Because there's an obstacle. There's an offense. There's something that caused the disruption in the first place. So reconciliation takes two. But again, my point is that because God initiated communication, we have a great example. And you know, like I said, it's a two-way street. Perhaps you may want to reconcile and they might not. But that shouldn't be the excuse for why we don't try again. And that's something that I really want you to, you know, I really hope that you put somebody in that fill in the blank. Who do you need to reconcile with? Even if they don't want to. That's not the point. The point is, will you be the one initiating that communication and allowing them to take you up on the offer? And I don't want to jump to the end, but isn't that what Christ did for us? Didn't he initiate it? You didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. But he offers, and we get to decide when we follow him. Now, my prayer, as I was preparing this week, is for wisdom. Because I understand relationships are not that simple. It's not just, hey, just go have a talk and you'll be fine. That's not what I'm saying. Again, this is not a self-help talk. Is are you relying on the power of the Holy Spirit for this conversation? So one of my favorite verses and one of the most challenging for me to, to live is Romans 12, 18. And it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live at peace with all. I'm not allowed to say that word I was told. Uh, at peace with all. As much as you can, are you trying to reconcile? Are you trying to solve, to remove the obstacles that are in, in the way of your communication? Now, the reason I say it's challenging for me is because, again, pride and selfishness. Sometimes I need to be right. Sometimes I want to be heard. And that is what causes a disruption in my communication. And so, I need help in my communication. Do you need help in your communication? And again, the question is, have you asked the Holy Spirit for his help in communicating? 
This is not your own doing. This is not your own trying. Especially the, most, the more complicated a relationship gets, the more we need the Spirit of God to guide us, to help us, to allow His wisdom, His patience, His goodness, His kindness, His Spirit of us to come out so that communication is actually effective. So, how do we add subtitles to our communication? How do we, how do we add that extra uh, help? And I have some practical steps here that I hope will give you the next step. Again, I know it's more than that, but somebody has to start. Somebody has to initiate the communication. So, how, we, how do we do that? One, you can build a bridge between the two of you. And the reality is that when you're communicating, sometimes you might not be able to get to the topic you want to talk about until you've created some common ground, until you've built a bridge, until you're able to say, hey, I love you, you love me, now let's move on, let's keep talking, let's reconcile from here. So are you building a bridge with fill-in-the-blank person, or have you burned it? And like, I'm, I'm good, like... That's a big burn bridge that I'm not going to build. Perhaps you need to rebuild it back up again, once again. Well, you maybe, just maybe, need to try again. Number two is express commitment. And, and this is very interesting because I think a lot of us, putting myself in that boat, we don't say things as much as we think we do. You know, we don't say I love you as much as we think we do. Like, oh yeah, she knows I love her and I, and I know she loves me, but... Have you expressed that? Have you said that? Have you told your student lately that you're proud of them? Have you told your parents that you're thankful? Have you talked to your kids like, hey, I love you? Have you said that out loud? It's kind of awkward sometimes, especially when there's stuff in between, right? Especially when there's arguments, especially when there's hurts. But have you expressed your commitment to say, hey, I love you so much that I want to reconcile. I want to find that common ground that will bring us together. Let me be clear here. Not just so that you're better, but so that God gets the glory. Because that's huge. As Christians, if we're living hurt or in, in fights with people, that reflects in the name of Christ. Because Christ has forgiven us. Christ has offered us grace and mercy. And sometimes we as Christians, we don't offer grace and mercy. Or we do, but I already did it once. I already did it twice. You don't get any more. How about number three? Maintain a positive tone. My mom would always say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, right? Thanks, mom. But it's true, right? Your tone matters. Your tone matters. I love you. It's probably not the best, right? <laughs> now, this one is, is hard for extroverts. If you're an extrovert, this is for you. It's for me. Listen carefully to the other person, what the other person needs to say. Don't be ready to build your argument. Okay, well, you said that. Hold on, let me write it down so I can, I can debunk it. I can, I can fight it back. I can show you that you're wrong, that you don't have the evidence that I know I was right. Are you listening to the other person, what they have to say? Not only are you listening, but are you, are you clarifying? Are you understanding? Will you seek to understand what the other person has to say? Ask questions. Hey, hold on, you said that. Is that what you meant? But you got to remember, you got to maintain a positive tone. This is not a fight. This is not a battle. You're trying to reconcile. What is the commitment, what is the bridge that you have built that you can always go back and say, hold on, before we keep down this road, let's remember, why are we trying to reconcile? Next one, this one's hard. Don't let your feelings get in the way. Especially, you know, this is easy in theory. Like, Psh, yeah, until you're face to face with that person, right? And then you remember what they said. Maybe they said it again. Maybe they acted again. But we are not to be led by feelings. And that's something that I've said so many times. I talk to students all the time. It's like, don't let your feelings make decisions for you. Because they're dumb. They're dumb. Let truth, let logic, it's not what you feel. It's the truth of God. So if the truth of God is that we need to seek forgiveness and repentance and reconciliation, don't let your feelings get in the way. And perhaps that means that you might have to stop the conversation and say, hey, I, I don't think I can keep, keep doing this. Let's, let's come back to this later. And then the last one, uh, think carefully about what you're going to say. Again, are you just trying to win the argument? Do you need to be right? Do you need to be heard? Now, the main point was because God initiated communication, we have an example to follow, a great example. 
So, will you initiate communication with fill in the blank? And again, I really hope you have somebody in mind. And I've been praying that as I'm talking, that God will bring that person that only do you know who is that you need to go try to communicate with. Because like I said at the beginning, this is not just us trying, but this is following the example of Christ. And one of the things that I love about God, one of the things I love about the example of Jesus, and this might sound wrong, and, and I hope it doesn't, but the reality is that a lot of people will not take Christ's offer. Christ died for us. He offers reconciliation. He says, hey, I love you. I've given you grace. Will you take it? But the ball is on our court. Right? Christ doesn't force his people to love him. Christ doesn't force his people to follow him. Now, when we follow him, we've we got to commit and surrender and, you know, pick up our cross. But until then, it is your decision. What am I saying here? If Christ has done that, you can literally run from Christ five, ten years, perhaps. And today, if today you turn back and say, Christ, I'm back, I'm here, what will Christ say? Yes, the offer is still up. Christ is not like, hey, you've got 30 minutes, and if you're done in 30 minutes, the offer is gone. But we do that as Christians. We're like, I already talked to my, my son a couple times, and he hasn't come back, so I guess I won't talk to them anymore. Hey, I already talked to my parents, and they just don't get it, so that's it. Why, if Christ offers grace and is open for us, and again, until today, now, in the future, the Bible teaches that this won't be the case, right? At some point, that grace will end, and at some point, there won't be a door for us to walk through. But today, there is. And so if Christ has done that, why don't we? And perhaps that is you today. Perhaps you're here today, and you've been running away from Christ, and you've been ignoring his offer to reconcile, although he initiated the conversation, although he started it, and although... You have said no and no and no. He still says, but I'm here whenever you're ready. Five, 10, 15 years, 30 years, who knows? That is the example that we ought to follow. Start with forgiveness, offer reconciliation, and let the other person take you up on the offer. And if they don't, it's okay. The offer is still on because Christ's offer is still on. We get to follow that. Worship team, will you guys come up here? And so today's title was subtitled, right? We need help in our communication. And I hope that, again, you don't walk away saying, I just got to try better, because that's not what's going to do it. It's tapping on the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, God, I need your help. Will you stand on your feet, to, to your feet with me? And, and I want you to close your eyes for a few, few seconds and... And I want you to kind of process some of this information. And perhaps you already have somebody in mind. Perhaps you're like, no, I'm good. I don't have anyone to reconcile. That's a lie. That's a lie. And I want you to picture that person and, and, and just ask, Father, what, what is the next step? What, what do I need to do? Perhaps you've initiated that communication hundreds of times. And that's why earlier I said that I've been praying for wisdom because I get it. It's not that easy. But somebody has to initiate communication and maybe just maybe that's you again maybe just maybe so as we sing this next song will you allow the spirit of God to bring things to remembrance and to speak to you and to give you courage and to um, guide you because I, I can't and if you need help we have some ministers here at the front that would love to talk with you pray with you again perhaps you've been running away from Christ and and Today is the day you're like, Christ, I'm going to take you up on the offer. I need to reconcile. I want to accept your forgiveness. I love the baptism stories, the, the testimonies of God's goodness, God's grace is still ready for us to take, to change our lives, to transform our lives. So let me pray, and as we sing this song, you can come to the altar, come to the ministers. Father God, we love you. You're a good God, and pray, Lord, for, for help. I need help in my communication with my spouse, with my children, with my parents, with, with my neighbors, with my co-workers. Relationships are complicated, God, but we're not on our own. We get to tap on an unlimited source of power on the person of the Spirit of God who can walk beside us, who is in us, 
So I pray, Lord, that we will not be wise in our own understanding and try to communicate uh, our message, but we would approach relationships with humbleness, with grace, with mercy, before judgment. God, I love you, and I pray that you will be glorified. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. that as you go on with the rest of your day, that you'll be reminded that the only reason we get to love is because he loved us first. The only reason we get to forgive is because he forgives us first. The only reason we get to reconcile is because he offered that to us first. If this is your first time here, I hope you had a good time. I hope you were felt welcome. And if you still need to talk to some counselors, they will be here, ministers ready to uh, talk to you about maybe relationships, or even uh, your next steps in in your faith. Uh, With that said, I love you guys. Thank you for listening to me today, and I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. We're dismissed.